Uh, my name is Ellen Bebermeyer. I am 25 years old and I'm from Davenport, Iowa. I was born in Iowa City, um, raised here uh, my whole life, never really moved anywhere else. So, I mean, I was adopted when I was a day old and I don't really know anything else. Like a lot of, a lot of kids were, you know, further later in life adopted, like as, at an older age and um, so like the only thing I've ever really known is the fact that I was adopted, um, which is kind of nice because I see a lot of stories about kids who don't find out until they're older and I don't really like that. Um, uh, I've known my whole life and I think that was almost easier for me to deal with it. From what I understand, my birth mother and father were not together and even though she was older, I believe she was 27, um, she just felt like it wasn't the right time in her life and that she wasn't ready for it, especially due to the fact that they weren't together. You know, I've been there and it, it's hard. So, um, so she met my parents um, through the adoption agency and everything while she was still pregnant. So um, they kind of set it all up and then once I was born, went with them. It was a closed adoption, which basically means that I have had absolutely no contact with her. I don't really know anything about my dad, because uh, he was c never part of it. My parents didn't even, or my adoptive parents had never met him. Um, uh, I think with closed adoptions, you have the option to meet your birth mother once you turn 18, if I'm correct. Um, but I just never really looked into it I guess. I've seen a picture of her and that was very hard but also kind of cool like seeing those traits in her that oh, I wonder if I'm gonna look like that when I'm her age and um, it's I, I always wonder like almost every single day like what is she doing what is her life like does she think about me ever um, and you know it's not a sad thing to think about because I know that she made her decision based on love. Um, she wouldn't have done this if she didn't love me and want me to have a better life, which she knew that she couldn't give me, which is why she chose this. So I think about it that way. You know, it's not, it's not something that's like, oh, you didn't want me, so you gave me away. It's more of you knew that you couldn't give me the best life that you could, so you chose this route, and for that I'm very grateful. So. I have one sister, she's two years older, she is also adopted. Yeah, it's a really interesting story. Um, it, actually, my sister's adopt or birth parents know my birth family, sort of. It's, it's kind of a weird connection that we have. So growing up, I guess, we kind of had the same uh, ideals about the whole thing because, you know, she's known her whole life that she was adopted and she's actually met her birth family, which I think is pretty cool. I have so many different emotions about it. Um, it's like just growing up, you know, when you're little, you're just like, oh, okay, so I'm adopted and these are my parents who raised me and their mom and dad, you know, you don't know anything else. Um, which I feel like it might get difficult if you have an open adoption, but I wouldn't I wouldn't know, you know, just I didn't really have the confusion until later on in life um, Because you know, these are the people who raised me so they're mom and dad and that's the way I always saw it and once I hit that point in my life where I started to understand a little bit more it brought up some new emotions that I wasn't really ready to deal with I guess um, like people make jokes like oh you're adopted haha -ha, like and I would laugh about it but it actually kind of like hurt my feelings a little bit um later on like I had a kind of a, an abusive relationship where I remember specifically he looked me straight in the face and said you your your real parents didn't even want you so why would anybody else and that started kind of a whirlwind of like, oh, wow, you're right, but you're not right, you know, and just so many different emotions come with it. Um, and I remember like being younger and like a teenager and sitting down and writing letters to my real mom and like, this is what I would say to you. And that's kind of where the video came into play too. It was more of like, um, like closure for myself, I guess, to make that, so. How old were you when you made the video? I was 23, so two, three years ago. Yeah. It was kind of hard, like, because I started 
the first time I remember writing anything to my real mom, I was probably like, I don't know, 11 or 12 years old. And it, I just sat down and wrote a letter, like, and my birth, or my adopted mom kind of helped me through it. She was like, well, why don't you do this? And we'll, we'll pretend that we sent it to her. So just write something as if you were actually going to send this, you know. So just, dear mom, you know, how are you? <laughs> and tell her like all sorts of things about myself. Um, which I kind of did in my video too, like, I don't know if I'm ever going to get the chance to tell you this in person, so here you go, this is my life, this is about me, this is my likes and dislikes and my thoughts and emotions about it. You know, I, I was homeschooled, um, both me and my sister were until high school, um, which got, it, it allowed me to get more, like, I guess bonding experiences with my parents, um, which I'm very grateful for. Um, but yeah, I'd say everything was normal, you know, I just had that thought in the back of my mind, not constantly, but it would just pop up randomly, like, oh, I wonder what, like, my real mom's doing, I wonder what she's doing and what her life is like, and it didn't really start being a big thing until I was, like, 18, 19, and that's when I started having all these different, like, negative emotions about it, I suppose. We had that normal, like, sister, like, squabble, you know, I don't like you, you don't like me, we have to share a room, you know, and then she went to college um, when I was 16, and that kind of made me miss her a little bit, and then she came back, and so I've tried to, you know, continue on my relationship with her. We're two very different people, so um, that can make it a little difficult sometimes, but... Um, you know, I'll always love her. She's my sister. It was actually, I believe it was 10 years ago now that she met them for the first time. And uh, her birth mother, I guess, had not really been stalking her, but she would, growing up, she would like go to all of her band concerts and uh, like football games because she was in marching bands. And when we found that out, it was like, oh wow, you actually cared enough to be like following her around and watching her grow up so watching them meet for the first time was a little bit emotional because that's when I kind of started thinking like what if this never happens in my life what if I never get to feel that so yeah it was pretty hard it's still kind of hard to think about but you know I mean they, they took me back in when I was having a really hard time and I've lived here with them for the past two years um, and, you know, I'm, I'm looking at moving on from it, but it helps because they get to experience watching their grandson grow up. He's their only grandson, and um, so they enjoy it, or so, so they tell me. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's, it's nice. I, I can talk to them about a lot of stuff. Um, uh, they understand, I guess. So it's crazy. It's I, it's something that I never thought would happen to me. Um, I don't want to say it was an accident, but you know we didn't plan for him. But now I couldn't imagine my life without him. Um, and I kind of like try to connect the two instances, um, like me not knowing my real mom and uh, knowing that she like made a decision that was life changing. Um, and that was probably a really hard decision for her to make. And me being in that situation of finding out that I was pregnant and not knowing what to do about it, um, I did think about adoption. I did, um, and obviously that didn't happen, but um, not a lot of people think of that as an option, I guess. Um, so it kind of helped me to understand what exactly she went through with me. So it was eye-opening, I guess. <laughs> I feel like um, in the in the past like four or five years, specifically since my son came into the picture, I've thought about it way more than I ever have just because like now I know what it's like and I'm growing up and maturing, you know, so it, it makes me think about things in a different way. Um, I know I've heard like the stories about the adopted kids who, you know, they go through a really hard part their, of their life when they're teenagers, like, oh, you're not my real parents, so I don't have to listen to you, and stuff like that, but I never really had those feelings, because the way I see it is, like, the two people who adopted me, yes, we're not blood-related, I'm not related to any of my family, but they're still my family, because that's all I've known.
I it's that's a hard question I guess um right now like in the world it's the whole debate about pro-life and pro-choice and the uh, like abortion aspect of like I don't know what to do about my situation so I'm just gonna take care of it and um I, w I would really like people to know that I'm definitely pro-choice even though I've had the life that I had in the story that I have um but I just I wish people would sit down and take time to think about the fact that there is that option um and I know that it's not an option for everybody but I mean uh, I don't know it's it's kind of a hard hard topic I guess to to think about an answer um I don't know. The reaction that I usually get 95% of the time if I tell people that I'm adopted, they think it's really cool and then they have all sorts of questions about it like, do you know your real parents? Like, do you ever want to meet them? And it gets really deep and personal. So I try not to tell people very often, but um, I mean, everybody, like my closest friends, they know, they know that it's a thing and um, I think they don't really bring it up because I feel like they know how much it kind of brings up emotions to talk about. Um, some, sometimes people make jokes and I'll get upset, but I won't tell them that I'm upset. It's just kind of like an internal thing that I have to deal with. Um, but no, most of the time I get a really positive reaction from it. Like, that's really cool, you know? And I feel like people just, they, they mostly just have questions about it. There's no like, oh, that I don't like that, or oh, I'm a fan of that kind of thing. I don't know. <laughs> A lot of the times I feel like people, like, they hear stories from parents who have given up a child for adoption, they never really hear the other side of it. Um, and I would just, I don't know, I'd tell people, like, in my life, I know everyone's different, but um, it, it kind of scares me to think about what would have happened if this hadn't been my life, because I sit and I think about the bigger picture all the time, like, what if it had been different people who had adopted me or what if um what if my mother decided to keep me um i guess specifically for parents who have given a child up for adoption or are considering that as an option um i would just want them to say that or to know that i like i'm happy you know it, it's not a big negative thing in my life there's obviously emotions that come with it but um, if, if a parent is ever worried about how their child is dealing with it, I just would want them to know that they're probably happy, you know, mo more than likely, and um, they're making the most of the life that you let them live, so. <laughs> um, I'm still me as a person. I grew up the way I did, and um, I've faced things that I, I would have either way you know it didn't it didn't hold me back at all it if anything it just kind of brought like mixed emotions into my life that I might not have had before but everybody is going to deal with something um it's one of the hardest things that I have to think about is everyone talks about having skeletons in their closet um and then you, when you sit down and think that you are the skeleton in someone's closet it's kind of eye-opening and um, definitely brings up some raw emotion, but um, I don't know. I just try not to think about the negative parts of that. And remember that, you know, I was raised by two people who really loved me. And they, the way I see it is they chose me, <laughs> so I have to be grateful about that, you know, because where would I be without them? So. <laughs> I, I definitely feel like I wouldn't be as strong of a person. Um, I've dealt with very deep depression and like anxiety issues. Um, I feel like it might have given me some abandonment issues, but you know, I wouldn't have had to deal with that and, and push through it if it hadn't. Um, I, um, I don't know, maybe commitment issues also, but um, all these issues, they're, yes, they're issues, but you, having these issues, you have to find a way to deal with it, so, you know, not having them, I wouldn't have had to, if that makes sense, and, um, so it's definitely made me a stronger person in dealing with negative emotion, because I learned at a very young age to, I don't want to think about this, and I don't want to have this negative emotion, so I'm going to think about all the positive sides of it 
being um, like all these people chose me I'm having a great life you know where would I be without them um, so there's that and um, on the like empowering side of it I guess uh, not knowing exactly where I came from is sad but also very empowering because I've become my own person that way I don't know if my looks or my traits or like I have dark hair and oily skin I don't know where that came from so I'm gonna deal with it you know <laughs> like embrace it I guess so um, I would say maybe I don't know That's, there's so much in my head right now that I, I just want to put into words it's very difficult um I would just maybe want other kids who are adopted to if you haven't had the the thoughts that I've had about it's basically it's gonna be okay like it's it happened it's part of your life and it kind of makes you who you are and it gives you a story to tell um, and it's yes it's very hard and very emotional to deal with the fact that the thought that you don't and maybe might ever not know where you really came from um, which is the biggest thing for me to deal with like medical history and family history and you have absolutely no idea um and you might not ever know but in my eyes that's okay because i'm still happy i'm healthy i'm alive i'm living my life which i might not have been able to do without adoption so um i don't know i would say for for also for parents who are kind of on the fence i know that the video that i made has helped several people. I've had friends who have shown it to people who maybe they just found out they were pregnant and they don't know what to do and they're leaning towards one way or another, like not knowing what they should do about keeping it or, or you know, having an abortion. Or, um, I would want people to know that there is always this option and it's probably the hardest thing you will ever do in your life because um, I've been there. I remember clearly the day that my son was born and one of the first things I thought when I held him was about my mom like what did she feel like when she was here and she had this baby and now she has to give her away um, it's very hard to think about but it's ultimately you know a good option and w without all the negative emotions that come with it um, it's possible so it's it's just finding like your own strength i guess to deal with it um and your own way of dealing with it i guess